But my concern about his approach and attitude, I think, is clearly retrogressive to development. When, when a leader feels that they are the only ones who know, that no one else should object, that all of the other people around are subservient, you always create a problem. It happened at some point to, to Chilua, okay? Uh, it happened, as I said, to Keke, and we can look at, at other areas. And for some people, it happened later on, after they taste power. Mm -hmm. For him, it has happened very quickly, partly because it is his character. As I said, I met him before he was president. And I think that he has got a very strong character which, which aims to diminish the light of everybody else and focus all that light on himself. Mm -hmm. and, and the danger of that is that... Watch the entire video, my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mutati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. This segment, I want us to begin to review, I think, the performance of our our, our all seven presidents. Yeah. Uh, but briefly tell me about your association with President Hakainde Chilema. How did you know him? How did you meet him? Did you meet him politically? Yeah, and uh, mm. just begin to speak to that. Many, many, many times. I think many times. I think that uh, the first time I, I meet him face to face was at his house. It was not a pleasant meeting. I, I, I think we, I had lost my temper here. Why? What happened? Um, they were trying to recruit me. Uh, um, he called me himself. Mm. Um, I think he was at, uh, in, in one of the provinces. Whether it was Western province or, or Northwestern province, I can't remember. But I don't know who gave him my number, but he called me. He said, my young brother, uh, can you come and uh, we talk and blah, blah, blah. We want you to work with us and so on and so on. And I said to him, well, um, I can't make any commitments, but uh, I am not against meeting anyone. Uh, so we can meet. So he said, oh, in two weeks' time, I will call you, and, um, and we have a meeting. Now, after, we, after that, he then started sending me invoice mm -hmm. several times. And they would call me, no, we want to meet you. Young youth people, maybe, they would come and meet me and say, oh, try, as if they were assessing me. Mm -hmm. I think that mm -hmm. maybe he had some, some, well, I don't know, but, mm -hmm. but it looks like they were assessing me. So... Um, you know, I played along until the third meeting, I got angry. Uh, a group of people came to see me at Intercontinental Hotel. Yeah. So I told him, I said, you know, you guys, I'm not a person with an ego. Uh, I know that people, some people may think that I'm arrogant because of the way I express myself, but I don't have any ego. And when party cadres from anywhere call me to speak, I will drive along, whether they want me to meet them in Kalingalinga or in in Baoleni or in Chawama, I go. And I'm very open with them with what I can do and what I cannot do. I don't have a chip of shoulder with bodyguards mm. surrounding me. And so I never do. You come to this meeting now. But I have also been approached by a lot of important people uh, who have come to me, uh, starting with Kaunda, the Chilubas. And I started mentioning to, mm. to, to me. And, and these people have no fails. Why is this person, who is a president of the opposition party, behaving in a manner that he is some sort of a Christ. That's what I said, that some sort of a messiah, where he calls me himself, he says he wants to, to meet me, then he's now playing what I call evasive game. Does he want me to plead to meet him? That's what I told him, because I'm not the one who called him. Does he want me to plead to meet him? So I told him, no, no, they started making excuses. I said, look, he called me, and now we've, this is the third meeting in which we are... You're we're discussing the same thing. Things and whatever and so on. What is this? So you go and tell him huh, that I'm not pleased. And this is the first indication, in my view, of a person I consider to be arrogant. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you that yeah. I consider to be arrogant. 
Mm. Uh, because people have come to my house. Big yeah. people have come to my house and sat in my little chairs. Mm. Why is he behaving as if I should go and plead? He, eh? mm. So I said, you go and tell him that every time I have any meeting with these people who are sent, my, my, my rating of him is, is, coming is, down. Is, is, is coming down. So I'm not going to meet anymore. So you, uh, you'll be very explicit. So I think that they went and told him. So I think two days later he calls me and very polite, no, my brother, I hear you said uh, uh, some strong words. I, I'm so, you know, he apologized, that okay. it's whatever and so on, but let us meet. I'm even prepared to come to your house because that's what, <laughs> what you had so I said, I said to them, I said, look, I didn't tell the, your, your people that I wanted you to come to my house. I was giving them the way I feel. I, I, I feel as if you, you, are, you are playing some sort of game of who's bigger. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and I, I am not comfortable with people. I, I've grown around power all, all my, all my life. life. I'm not going to treat with people who, are, who, who see themselves as larger than life. I'm not saying that I'm, I'm larger than life. I'm just saying I, I'm not used to this. So he says, no, no, no. Uh, I said, I'm prepared to come to your house if you, if you still want to meet me. So we eventually met at his house. Now, by that time, I was already offended and I was quite angry. I have, I have to be very honest. Mm. So when we first met and he was with, I can't recall whether he was with, uh, with the Maxwell Bayani uh, or, or the Minister of Education now. Um, Siakalima. Siakalima. Because I, I've met, I had met him several times, once with the Siakalima, once with, uh, with Bayani, once with, uh, you know, two or three times with the, with the current Minister of the, As I said, my association with him has been quite long. So when I got to the house, I went with the Chifukush. Yeah. Okay? And uh, we started to, to argue. And I said, I think I, I used some very strong words. And, and, and then he, he actually also shot back and tried to defend himself. But in the end, the two, uh, I had gone with a colleague, and, and the one he was with kind of controlled the situation mm -hmm. in which mm -hmm. we... We began, we, we began to speak. So, but, but as I said, it, it was quite a, an aggressive meeting. After that, I met him when President Sata, um, uh, the, the call one. I mean, there were a there were number of other meetings in between. But after that, I met him uh, when, President, uh, um, when President Sata um, uh, fired those judges. You mm. recall that uh, mm. there was there was where he called it up. I think uh, yeah, from, Malawi. Chikop, from, from and, Malawi and, and, and fired by, by, by Professor Musonda mm. uh, and there were three other judges in 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 in, in 2012. And I took offence to that and I thought yeah. that uh, President Sata was trying to compromise the judiciary. So the day after, I actually went to television stations to air your views to air my views your about objection. how destructive was that. Mm. So. In that process, I decided to try and see whether I could get the opposition together. And so I called President uh, um, uh, Hakainde and explained uh, what had happened. I called uh, Elias Chipimo. I visited um, uh, Wamilupi. He, he had his own party. And I was already in the MMD. Although I was not in the, in the structure, I had been part of Arabi's campaign committee team, if you recall. Yes. And, 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 and uh, Major Kachingwe and, and, and the NEC were using me as a resource person to try and, and, and get MMD rebooted. So I knew all of the leadership. And, and so I managed to convince the MMD uh, and all of the political party came together. The first meeting we held mm. was at the Secretariat of the UPND in... Uh, in, uh, I think they were in Lagos Road at the time, mm, mm. and to start the fight against those judges. Mm. Before even the NGOs got, got involved, we started, but the, the NGOs eventually also joined in, joined in mm. and not joined us, I mean, but just also saw what the issue was until that issue was dropped, if you recall. Now, during that time, I used to have even General Meander, I called General Meander as well, mm. and he also came because he was president of Heritage at the time. So we started to work together as the opposition, and I had a lot of dealings with him during that, that, that period. Again, my, my impression was, I think it was more negative than positive. I, I have to be very honest uh, yeah. with you. And at that point, Dora had joined in to be part of the secretary, because we were the secretariat for that 
same whole group. And my, my impression was a, a person who was very strong-headed, uh, a person who really was not very keen uh, not to have his views heard and implemented over other people. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and he struck me as a person who was full of hubris. Let me use that word. Who was mm -hmm. uh, uh, full of hubris. But I, I wasn't certain until when, when, when he now became president. You can see that those characteristics come through. Um, the president seems to be a man with a lot of hubris. Mm. And, and, and I think that it is dangerous for a leader to have that, that sort of hubris. Um, uh, you know, the, the last press conference, for example, yeah. um, I think he mentioned to three ministers, which I thought was rather improper. Um, I think that he was pointing out to the Minister of Home Affairs, you are very lucky to be a minister, and, and said some other thing on the minister, and the cameras were, were and I think that, again, he was like to, to point out that I am the boss and I am the, the one who knows all. Then, within a short uh, say, uh, a period, he then pointed out to Mutati. He said, no, you know, I was arguing with, with, with Mutati. He was saying this thing cannot be done in three months or whatever. And I convinced him that this, and, that, and it, it worked. Then he went to, to I think, the Minister of, of Mines. Mines and so on. Mm. So, and, and I remember at that point, I said, you know what? This is what Kaunda used to do at, in the end, in the end of his, of his days. Because Kaunda was very disciplined. President Kaunda was one of the most disciplined individuals I've had. With, with almost all aspects of life, with money, with women, with mm. ego, with whatever. The old man was very disciplined. But as they say, power corrupts, and absolute mm. power corrupts absolutely. absolutely. Mm. By the time President Kaunda had become super keen and, and was sometimes even a bit unfair to, to his minister, he would even, you stand up, and whatever. Yeah. It yeah. was near the end of his term. Mm. In the beginning, he wasn't like that. He okay? was very humble. Now, mm. what uh, our president was doing at that press conference, I immediately thought of KK when he was at the... At his height. Now. At the height of his power just before he left. And I said to myself, you know, it took KK 30 years. Literally 30 there. years to get to. In power. Because, I mean, people talk about 27. I mean, sometimes we forget that Kaunda was, was uh, head of government in 1962. By yeah. uh, and then 1963, mm. uh, by, the, by the end of 1963, in he, January, was he was prime, prime minister. minister. So mm. he, this man was literally in charge of this country for almost 30, 30 years. years yes. And I said to him, it took him 30 years to be affected by power. Our current president, it has taken him just two, two years. years. And already you can see that the the influence of power has gotten to him. So the, the question you, you ask is, uh, how did I know? I knew him through this. Now, of course, as I said, there were many other meetings. There was a meeting I had with him to try and convince him uh, to be the running mate to Arabi. I was an, an envoy myself, and uh, we were working together with Uncle Vijay. Uh, and then the things broke up because... Uh, you, you, you are an academic. You are well-traveled. You mm. served as a diplomat. Mm. You served as an economist at Ministry of Finance. You've been a politician. You were close mm. to many heads of state, President Kaunda, Rupia yes, Banda. Uh, where is President Nakainde Ichilema failing? First, on the economy, and I'm glad first you, you decided to describe his character because mm. there are some flaws mm. there with his character. Yeah. But coming to the issues of the economy and the direction of our country. Yeah, but, that, but, but that's the reason why I started that way. Because... I have no hatred whatsoever. Honestly speaking, I have no hatred for President uh, Kainde whatsoever. Uh, but my concern about his approach and attitude, I think, is clearly retrogressive to development. When, when a leader feels that they are the only ones who know, that no one else should object that all of the other people around are subservient, you always create a problem. It happened at some point to, to Chilua, okay? Uh, it happened, as I said, to Keke, and we can look at, at other areas. And for some people, it happened later on, after they taste power. Mm -hmm. For him, it has happened very quickly, partly because it is his character. As I said, I met him before he was president. 
And I think that he has got a very strong character which, which aims to diminish the light of everybody else and focus all that light on himself. Mm -hmm. and, and the danger of that is that you become, you become a mini dictator, a mini messianic figure, where all the others are not so sure how, to what extent they so can advise. teamwork must have collapsed. Team, I think that it appears that teamwork has collapsed and, uh, and he wants to have uh, control, micromanage everything, and you can tell. For example, there is a presidential implementation team at, at State House there. Do we what need are they, uh, that? Eh? Do we need that? No, precisely. I mean, what are the line ministry doing? And, and which has now involved a huge budget, which was not there in other, in, in, in other people. You have the ACC, DEC, and so on, under the, under, under the president. Under the president. They, were, they were independent uh, 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 association and, and so on. So you, you get the impression of a person who wants to you know, micromanage everything, which eventually collapses. You remember the, 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 the picture of John Susi Rhodes with, mm, the, with his, uh, with legs, his legs, legs from Cape Town to Cairo. And then the, the, the strings and doing that. That is the impression I get that this presidency is all about, that within just Zambia, that is the approach he wants to take. I think it's a very bad approach uh, because then you are the one thinking up of everything and invariably you make a mistake. Because corporate governance, best companies in the world work on the basis where there is a chairman, there is a managing director, and there are all those uh, checks and balances within division your own system. Division of labor. Within, yeah. yeah, division of labor within your own system. Immediately you get rid of that. You then create what? You create the word dictator. And, and not from an offensive point of view. The word dictator as in the sense that this person is doing everything you're, and you're dictating everything and you're not allowing the organization to breathe and to come into form of its own and to create innovation and creativity. So you stand for that. And in the end, you make some mistakes. And some of those mistakes are quite evident. The economic policies is pursuing, if any? Well, I believe that... You know, the UPND had so-called 10-point plan yeah. in opposition. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, you would think that now that they're in government, we should have had some economic rescue plan. Yeah. Uh, you, you were in charge of um, national development plans. I think you developed mm. some of the early I, no, ones. I, in fact, I, I, I'm, I'm actually the one who was the focal point per person for the development of the fifth national development plan yeah. at the Ministry of Finance. Uh, I was the one who was a key uh, driver towards the development of the Vision 2030. Time frames and so on, and even the district strategic uh, programs. I was the one, and 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 superintending even the implementation of the poverty reduction strategy program. If you At remember, the time. Uh, okay, mm. uh, I was not the director, but I had all of these responsibilities, which were given to me to ensure that these things go. So I I I think I've got a, a fairly good knowledge about the operations of of, of economic oh, management. Economy. So where is it go, gone wrong? Yeah, I think that. The first thing that they've gone wrong, and I said this earlier, is that they have done similar, a similar issue with what the MMD did when they came into power, and that they have taken an, ideolo an extreme ideological approach towards the management of this country, okay? which in this country has proved to always create problems. So when you need, in the beginning, the, it was not very ideological. They were practical. Then they, became, they began now to become too ideological and lost control. The MMD, when they began for them, they were an extreme ideological position. The UPND also have done that. So that if you look at the policy towards the mining sector uh, and all of the uh, rebates and, and concessions and, and, and tax uh, uh, incentives that have been given, they have been given on the basis of an ideological issue. Now, I know Dr. Sokotwani very well, and I think that he's someone I respect dearly. But I also do know that Dr. Sokotwani is fairly ideologically inclined towards the free market. And he believes that the private sector should be left fairly free to do what, what, what they're doing with, with as little controls as possible. 
I think that that is a, a wrong ideological mistake. Now, I'm not saying he's Dr. Msokotwani, but I think that that is what has been adopted. He's a businessman, of course, and obviously we all know that he's influenced quite significantly by, by, by the Breadhurst Foundation and, and those who have taken that ideological frame. So I think that the first issue is an ideological one, uh, that some of the policies that they are implementing have already let them down because of the belief in the capacity of the market to regulate itself and manage itself. Uh, hence, where the exchange rate is today. It's on free With, fall. It's on free fall without, the, without any attempt to try and, 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 and assist it. Now, the ideological frame is that you can't do that because it will be worse. Now, there are alternative arguments towards this. And in, in other cases, for a situation that we are in, People have made interventions. Of course, the argument that I will, will be told is that our fiscal space is very limited. But as I said, if, if you are creative, you can actually come up with something that would be able to manage the economy uh, a little bit better. Now, when I heard the first budget uh, of, the, uh, of, of, of uh, the UPND, I felt that the budget was similar to the last budget of the MMD. Okay. okay? And I thought that that was problematic. The, the, the 2010, 2011 yeah, one. That's yeah. right. Yeah, mm. that it was very similar. Um, in terms, even with some of the... When Dr. Msokotani was, was, uh, was, uh, was uh, Minister of Finance. And the difficulties of me seeing that similarity is that that budget, the similar budget which was presented in, in, in 2010 for 2011, was being presented at a time when, one, we were going through elections, but most importantly, when the economy was doing very well. Mm. You know? Mm. In, because in, 19, in 2007, our, our growth rate was, was 7%. In 2006, mm. I think it was 6.8 or some, mm. somewhere like that. So the parameters of that budget were very much based on the structure of the economy when the economy was, was doing well. very well. Mm. The budget that was presented, the first budget, was similar, uh, including the, the upscaling of the, the CDF and so on, at a time when the economy was, Unfortunately, was not doing so well. Mm. So my fear was that some of these parameters will not be met because of the state of the economy. I think there is over ambition in terms of what what, 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 uh, what is uh, being thought of. Uh, and I thought that it might create some difficulties. A CDF, uh, which was one of the, 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 the places that was, was, uh, was uh, upscaled. I have said this thing before. The, the idea of upscaling CDF was actually an MMD idea, derived out of the district strategic programs. Mm. But there was a hold in upscaling it. Because when we did a due diligence at the time I was at the Ministry of Finance, we discovered that there was insufficient capacity mm. at the district local and level. the local level mm. to be able to manage those resources and that there will be a lot of... Uh, 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 Loss, pilferage, that's right. and poor at, absorption at the, so capacity. We mm. had decided that it would be postponed until we could increase the capacity in those mm. areas. Mm. But as you know, the MMD then loses... Part to the PF. office now. Yeah. Now, when the PF came, I think that they suspended that particular aspect and concentrated on forming more district rather than decentralizing in the manner in which this is being done. But mm. the, but President Sada chose to increase district mm. and to to remove some headquarters and so on. And I think in that process, kind of forgot some of the issues which were quite available at at, at the time. Mm. So here you have a situation where even in CDF. There is exactly what we had feared. Mm. In some cases, there's insufficient allocation. Even so, people are saying, no, it's being allocated. But I know some areas where the allocation has, uh, has been quite low. Then there is also absorption capacity is in many areas it's, is not there. Nice poor. There are a few areas where they're doing very well. But in a lot of areas, there is a lack of absorption. Mm. Now, even in the areas where there seems to be some improvement, I think that as the audits are being done, you will discover that there will be a lot of, of, of leakages in it. Now, mm. am I saying it's a bad policy? I'm not saying so. I think that it was rushed, uh, and I think that it was rushed for a political purpose.
tried to persuade him not to, to stay. Do, to stay, yeah. And 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 uh, and Nyerere um, politely insisted that he needed to go. Because um, Nyerere resigned in 1985. Far earlier. Yeah, in 1985. Wow. Maybe, maybe you can say far earlier, but it was really a term because uh, I think that the, the last term, I think that I think the old man should have left in 1988. If, if you want, because clearly the world was changing and, and the struggle we had achieved, we were almost near the end, it was just apartheid, which was almost, almost done. Uh, Namibia and South Africa was only remaining by 1988. Eight, yes, that's, mm. that is right, yes. Uh, uh, no, no, Namibia has already gone. Namibia had, uh, I think Namibia had gone, because as, as we were saying before the, the program, uh, that, uh, that uh, no, maybe, it, it, maybe I'm, I'm mistaken. Yeah, because my Namibia, dad went to, yes, yeah, that's right. You won't set up in, because it, Namibia became independent in 1990. Yeah, yes. And then South Africa Yeah, but that's what I'm saying, that the, the, our struggle really around the region had more or less been concluded, yeah. It had mm. actually more or less been concluded, and at that point, I think that yeah, because Mozambique left. was so, independent. That's right. Zimbabwe then, was independent. Angola, that's right, Angola and, and so on. So, yeah. it, and even South Africa, it was quite clear which 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 trajectory. Although the old man was very influential in 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 the end days, you know, a, a lot of people may not know this, but they, but even to ensure that uh, Mandela became president and 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 uh, and the and the tabo, tambo. Tab, uh, tabo declined. That was the old man. Mm. You know, he's he 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 was the old, go between. Even with the Boers themselves, well, with, with the <laughs> with, uh, the, with the government. That, yes, that's the right. The Africans. Media team. It, That's mm. right. The Africans mm. and so on. Um, so as I said, when when Mandela was also had announced that he would do one term and that he was finally going to do, the old man actually tried to persuade him. Uh, that he shouldn't leave, and 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 I know this because, as I said, You're I was already his, 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 mm. uh, uh, assistant, and he f he flew down to uh, to South Africa, and they had. Why did you think Nyerere should stay on, and Mandela should also stay on? Yeah, yeah, because th that's that's what, what why I'm saying that I think that one of his difficulties is that he believed, uh, in a sense, of the importance of the one. In, 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 in development. And I think that he believed it beyond where I and many people would, 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 uh, would not believe. Okay? So even when the UNIP members came to request that he comes back in, in, in UNIP, it was an easy thing for him to do. Because to accept, because he, believed, because he yeah, believed in that. He believed that you know, in, in, he, had, he had a value. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, because as I said, I, I adore the old man in many ways, but I'm looking at the down, downside. I think that his biggest weakness was that he overstayed, and, and he believed really in, 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 in the power of the one individual over the rest, although he was very consultative in the beginning, and only in the end did, as I said, did power can... become unilateral. Uh, power can corrupt. His economic policies... Yeah, as I said, I think that the problem with the economic policies came when they became ideological. In the beginning, the Mulungushi reform, the material reform, even the acquisition of the CCM, I think was done from a very practical point of view. When now we decided to become ideological because of, of, the, of the, the Eastern influence, at that point we started making mistakes. So the redemption of the Zimco bonds in 1973 was a very ideological issue. It cost us a lot of money. And, and, and the over, overreach of government wanting to do everything now became ideological. But from 1964, it took four years before the Mulungushi reforms and, and, and material reforms of 68 and 69. And even those, as I said, they were quite moderate. Mm. They, were, they were actually very moderate. They, 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 it was an absolute acquisition. The problem, I think, started really in... in in the in the mid when we were a one party state yeah yes, 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 yes. Yeah, in the mid seventies yeah. and then they became we became progressively ideological and started taking ideological decisions and not practical decisions. Chiluba Chiluba the same as I said to you that the problem is that they began with an ideological position mm -hmm. okay stopped development planning uh, no participation of the government in, 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 in the market, in, in the market and, and became very ideological. Uh, I think that Chilu was um, uh, positive side. 
is that Chilwa was actually quite a nice person. I mean, I mean, you, all, you, I mean, I met him earlier, mm. uh, but I'm sure you, you worked with him. Yes. Uh, and and Chilwa was actually quite a nice person, uh, uh, even when when you quarrel. And I think that he also went in it with a good heart. I think that he was captured by, as I said, by the many forces, by the many described. forces that that they are working for me. And then he decided that he had to gain control. And in that capacity of him trying to gain control, he also learned the, the tactic of playing. Remember I told you, he, he began to play them. And, but I think that his greatest uh, weakness for me was the fact that he was unprepared to further democratic norms. Uh, mm. Hence the change of the constitution, uh, the barring of, of, of a, a main opponent, uh, and, and then lack of good corporate governance in the manner in which the privatization process was done. Mm. Because there, were, there are a lot of questions. I know that, I don't want to go to the idea of, 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 of corruption, but of course those accusations were there. There were, there, there were, there were a lot of accusations that were made of corruption. And, and I think that that was because of lack of corporate governance that had been put in, in place. Let me give you an example. The privatization of Luasha Mines, for example. Mm. Uh, the main bidder at that point was uh, if, uh, this uh, First Quantum Minerals, mm. uh, which had done everything. And they were about to sign with ZDA because they had been given one of the tailings dump, which they were producing Wanam very Kubwa. well. Mm. Wanam Kubwa, yes. Mm. And because of the profits and things they were generating, they decided to bid for Luasha Mines. They put all the specs into place. And they were on the verge of signing what was actually a better deal than which was signed with, with the Ramcos. Indians, yeah. Just on the eve of signing that agreement, the Francis Kaunda team, which was appointed, if you recall, uh, took over the negotiations from, from ZDA on the behest of the president that they should take over. Then, when they took over, they threw out First Quantum and gave it to Ramcos. Mm. Okay? Mm. Uh, to Benan, I think it was there. Uh, yeah. And First Quantum actually took issue, and I think they threatened to show, because they believed that there was insider dealing yeah. and that there was yeah. underhand uh, method. Now, in the end, the purchase price that uh, First Quantum was offering, offering ended up being much higher than the new, the the new, new buyers. buyers. Mm. Uh, almost half uh, what the first bidder was, was, um, was, was uh, offering. And then all of the issues and commitments which they had said they would fulfill, they never fulfilled. And as a result, we had a disaster later by them mm. withdrawing. Then yeah. you had that issue with, with Luansha. Mm. And if you recall, it, it put Luansha on the map because shortly after that, we even won. UNIP won a seat. Yeah, in, in the, Rome with Cameron Puel. With Cameron Puel, mm. Huh? Mm. which was not the only one. I mean, mm. I mean, that again goes to the argument we are playing that was he going to win? UNIP was actually winning back some seats. Some seats mm. and, and so on. So I think that lack of good corporate governance is very important and it was a weakness of President Chilua, in my view. Mm. Which is similar. We, we, we come to Mwanawasa. Yeah. I was a civil servant during Mwanawasa's administration. I was working at the Ministry of Finance. This is where the Ministry of Finance I was at economy. the Ministry of Finance. I was, uh, uh, when I left the Ministry of Finance, because I, if you recall, I had quit, stood in 2006, then I was economic advisor to the government, mm. uh, but uh, working under JICA. Mm. Okay, but still dealing with 12 line ministries uh, in terms of, of uh, of promoting economic growth. Mm. And then I eventually went to ZDA. This was all during Manawasa's uh, 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 program. I think that one of the problems that, uh, the, the good things about Manawasa, he was able to bring back the country from being an extreme right wing back to the center. Mm. Okay? Mm. So, it was under Manawasa's administration that we began to plan again. Hence, the Fifth National Development Plan, the Vision 2030, the, the, uh, the district strategic uh, uh, programs, and 
also what was referred to as activity-based budgeting. That was under Amonawa. And the idea was that you cannot allow the private sector to be in complete control. control. Mm -hmm. and, and Manawasa was very good at bringing this to the center. Okay? I think that that, that, that really helped. Rupia Banda. Oh, okay. We are, we are, uh, uh, Rupia Banda, I think his greatest asset was that he did not disturb the good things which were happening at that. That at, he found. That he found. And as a result, the economy actually exponentially grew even faster under Arabi, which a lot of people don't know this, but under Arabi, the, the, for example, the production of maize jumped from, from 1.2 at the end of Malawasa's administration to 3 million by 2011. The production of cotton, the production of soya, the produ even, even the production of the mines huh, jumped significantly from... You know, the, the loss, mm. we wish we had more time, the loss of Arab B is, is a mystery because this is a man mm. who had a good economy running but lost the election. He had a very good economy uh, running and I said that one of his greatest uh, uh, achievements was that he did not interfere with the, the process. So he, he's, he enhanced it. He added uh, uh, on, on Manawasa's uh, ministers other people which were doctors and people who we thought were very competent, and then he, he kind of let go. Arabi was not as, as uh, interfering in the running of government as other presidents are. Mm -hmm. he, he was very laid back, and, and, and of course, I'm also saying this because I was very, fairly close to him. Mm -hmm. I was not the special assistants who were there, but mm -hmm. I, I, can, I can honestly say that he called upon me many times outside that, that area, and that I also called on him many times. I initiated to go advise on things which I thought were going wrong. And he was very receptive uh, to me because our relationship went back. Why, why did he lose elections? I think that one of the reasons was that MMD had overstayed uh, in power. It had done 20 years. It had done 20 years. And progressively, a chunk was being taken out of the MMD. Mm. So Michael Sata took out a chunk, BY took out a chunk. Uh, it started with Mazoka in 1998. That is right. They, mm. they were all taking off chunks mm. of the MMD. When Manawasa came through, one of the difficulties that Arabi had was that when the transition took over, some of the people who were very loyal to, to President Manawasa were not so keen on him. So, yeah, yeah. so again, they had to, to, to separate with those. They had to separate with them, so a rift developed. Mm. People like Magandhi, Magandhi and yeah. others. And he wasn't Jordan the only Pombo. one. Others, he, he mm. managed to convince them, but many actually began to undermine him in the party, uh, as mm. well as mm. going mm. to mm. other political parties to, to undermine him. And he simply did not have control of the party, mm. Uh, mm. Uh, partly because of that and partly because he was seen as an outsider. Yeah. As, as a unique piece to adjust. Okay. So within the three years, I think he was unable to really control the, the machinery of the party. And that would enable his re-election. Yes, so mm. that was one of the factors. Uh, the, the, so, so, so there's the issue of the MMD, there was the issue of, of that. I, I think that there was also an issue of the current issue, for example, that, um, that has just been raised, the issue of the the Barossiland agreement issue. It, it wasn't handled well. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it was handled well. Uh, if you recall that the, there, was, uh, there was some riot, there was some shooting, and, and he didn't handle it very well. I mean, obviously, I can say that I and, and several close friends outside that had a discussion with him on, on how we thought this, this matter should have been handled. But he gave his reasons why he took the approach he took, which I think many of us... The hardline approach. Yeah, yeah. Which, yeah. It, it was hardline, and, and, and not so much that it was a hardline. You, you know, sometimes you have to be able to negotiate your way into these things. And there were a number of things that had happened, which I think that gave him the reluctance to, to follow a certain path. Uh, I, I think those I, I cannot say I would be abusing, I, 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 abusing my trust. But the fact that the issue was not well handled indicated, showed in the elections, because in, in 2008 uh, um, and 2011, Arabi lost 90,000 votes from one province. That, that was 
Western province. And I think it was largely due to the Barossi, Barossi Agreement issue, which of course also President Michael Sata took Capitalized on, because yeah, it became yeah, a but, campaign issue. Uh, campaigned on it, and, mm. and, and even the current administration also capitalized mm. on it, because the UPND also took uh, uh, what, what I would say a similar view to what uh, our President uh, Sata took. And we already lost 90,000 votes. It was very clear now. If you consider the fact that the difference between President Sata and Arabi was 183,000 votes, okay? So half of that so came, it from, came from one province. Yeah, so because PF won some seats in Nalolo and Mongo. That is right. So yeah. that issue, I think, was one of the issues. Mm. Um, and there were several other issues, I think. I think that also, I think that the, those people who wanted to paint Arabi in a negative light largely succeeded to do so. Of course, I think primarily led by, by the Post. By the Post, By the yes. Post newspapers. Uh, because I think that there were some, and I'm being as honest, there were some outrageous accusations which were represented as facts, which were actually not facts. And, and many people believed it. I mean, one of them I was involved in. In mm. fact, I was involved in maybe two of some of the accusations. I know there was NAPSA 15 million or whatever, which ZDA was, was handling, which was not true. There was the issue of, of uh, RP capital, if you remember about mm. the privatization of Zamtel. I was the head of privatization at ZDA at that time. Mm. And many of the things that were being said were just not accurate. Now, as I said, this is not the basis of the program, but maybe at another time we can go into okay, go. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.